Cave to Become Men, Journaling History, by Doug Ferguson. Written by Doug Ferguson. The Cave of Dagobah, Know Yourself by Knowing Others. Many have heard and read the myths of the origins. History can challenge us because there are so many versions of it. Which version have we heard? Are the narratives valid or are they skewed to a certain perspective for a purpose? These are the questions that each of us should ask of history, we are told. For no matter how diligent, honest, and trustworthy the historian is, or the person that is telling his story, that narrative will be skewed by the historian. Accepting the narrative without question says things about the listener that they should consider about themselves. Why do we accept narrative? Hearing and learning about history is also a method of learning about ourselves. Our reaction to the story is a lesson in itself. We are all creatures of our time and place. Knowing our time and place will give us a better understanding of who we are. Knowing others' times and places gives us a comparison to gauge ourselves. We all need perspective. A picture of, with just one object in it, without perspective, will make the observer wonder whether they are looking at a toy, a model, or a full, real-sized object. Without perspective, we cannot know what we are observing, or what we are. Are we just matter? Are we just dust to be blown in the wind? Are we just a cog of the universe? Is our destiny fixed in the fates of time? How can dust be aware? Are we just stardust? How can dust cry for knowledge? Does our cry in the dark mean anything? How can we know? Listen to the voices in time. Listen, feel, and see the wakes of time in the pool of history that makes us. We cannot know ourselves without knowing others. If we only know people that echo our thoughts in our own setting place and time, we are crippled from knowing ourselves. Push, feel the resistance, feel the feedback, move in the dance of life, dance the dance of history. Know of others, test them, find out who they are. The more we can really find out who they are, the more we will explore ourselves, test ourselves, find ourselves. We need to push the boundaries of our own perspective. Find out what lurks in the conscious pool of time. What awareness will reach up and touch your being. Find the pool of living water, the reality that surrounds us. Search. Are we who we think we are? Finding out who we are is the reason we are here together now. You are not alone when you read. You are with the writer. I want you to relax and get comfortable with me. We can enjoy our time together. I hope that you will enjoy my company that we can take on this journey together. But first, let us get away from the hustle and hassle of the world. Let us get away from it all. We want to clear our minds and just relax in the wonder and views of nature, listening in the near silence, in the pool of reality, not worrying with the concerns and demands of others, but just relaxing in the warmth of the sun, enjoying the quiet time of peace, listening to the silence of nature, to be free of the tangled webs around us, these are the times we have peace with ourselves and can calm our mind. When we are in that place, we can then soar above the hurry and scurry of life. These times are few, and many times there is a rude awakening. But let us take that time now before some surprise breaks the peace and we lose it. Let us find ourselves together. Find our consciousness that stirs within us to become alive. As a child, we like to think we can soar as a bird or imagine the flight and view from a kite. Many times, there is nowhere where we can find the open spaces that give us, us the view we long for. We can search for the open place, the place of promise, but where is it to be found? Sometimes we might gather a friend to search for that place, a place that can affirm and transform us into something more, a place where we can, we can come in touch with life. And when we find that place, are we aware of the dangers that lurk there? Are we oblivious to the edge of decision, that precipice that we have wandered onto? In many societies, elders take the young to that point and place. They are experienced and aware that to become an adult, the child must go to a place when they are ready. But who in this day and age is aware of these things? In reality, no one is really ready to walk another to this Bill Dunn Roman, the coming of age from child to man, each must face this time alone, though another is near, but out of reach. Many in these times protect their young from this place because it is a challenge, and they worry that their young will not be ready. 
They cannot let go and let the child grow up and make their decisions for life. They continue to desire to protect and yet, in doing so, stunt the adult into forever being a child. I will tell you of my life, who I am, for I want you to know me and understand me as we go on this journey into history. In this way, you will know how skewed my perspective is, of how you can relate to me and my view of history. For my life, my brothers and I, we were rudderless. Nobody was there to take us through to manhood, though we were lucky that there is a consciousness that we did not know moving us through time. I and my brother were weeds. Our parents were not there for direction. They themselves had more responsibilities than they could handle. Their organization and focusing skills were few, yet they bubbled along. Truly, it seems, in all our lives, as we look honestly at our own skills of parenting, we realize we are totally deficient. It is very rare indeed to truly have a mentor who can pair the path of life with the young. And are the young willing to listen to those that do know the path to adulthood? So we come upon that moment of adulthood, and it takes us totally unaware. But really, who can truly be prepared for the questions living hold? I myself faced the decision of life and was barely prepared for that time of decision. And now every day I realize that to grow I must face the decision of life over and over again. Though the decision does not seem so dramatic as it did when I first became aware of it. As I mentioned before, for the decision of life one must want to gain perspective and soar above the hustle of the world to find a place of solitude. My friend and I were two that wanted that place, but at that time, it did not seem that we were looking for it or all the drama that came to happen. Two children on the verge of becoming adults, but now just looking for a place in the city to fly a kite with all the wires and poles, houses and yards, an open place where the winds blow unobstructed. The river was our backyard and it was frozen even in March. The river completely froze and solid, except for a little place where the river flowed strong far from where we were flying. It was perfect. What could go wrong? We were flying the kite and it soared, but of course just flying it high quickly got boring. We had to do tricks and see who could get out, out through the other. And damn of all places, it should fall into during our tricks was the very spot where the river flowed. Of course we went over to rescue the kite. That was the place where I blundered into the Cave of Decision, the place between life and death. Just as Luke Skywalker wandered into the Cave of Dagobah, I wandered into the Den of Death, coming out forever changed. Have you had your time of decision? Have you decided? These times give us a perspective of life. Each of us needs to understand that time, to understand others. We need to make the effort to see their perspective, not projecting ourselves upon them. To understand and know rather than to condemn. To even be prepared to share our own moment of decision. Was it truly a life and death one or could we run away from it? Bringing the experience out is enough for in doing that we judge ourselves. So why judge another? It is enough just to know, to understand that in perspective. Through it all it may be possible to gain a friend and even a companion in life. Maybe in sharing you will be encouraging another and give hope and they might do the same for you. In understanding others, one can get to know them better and perhaps possibly know ourselves better. And in some way we're, maybe even know more about the eternal perspective. To know something of the eternal gives one a centering of the soul, a peace beyond the usual. Personal perspectives are like sidewalk drawings. There are many amazing sidewalk drawings done where a special vantage point one can see an amazing 3D perspective. Consider that sidewalk imagery as one's personal perspective, a world view of reality. But taken from another perspective, the picture is completely distorted, fragmented, and unrecognizable. To understand another perspective, one needs to consider their world view assumptions. To do this, one must assume the position of the other, moving towards the position in their mind to take the place where the other is. Till their 3D dimensional sidewalk drawing comes into view. Once perceived, the distortions of this view and their own become visible. Once a person has fallen off their wall thinking that they know it all and have taken the effort to understand the other, then the brain can do its magic and reassemble the scrambled eggs, something the king of horses and men of government have no resources to do. Gaining perspective helps create wonder in the mind, which will automatically, magically, modify the scene to encompass a totally new modified worldview, redrawing the sidewalks in our mind's eye as it steps back to take a picture of a new perspective. Do not become enraptured in your own perspective. Share, but don't be oppressive. 
Those who enforce an intolerant monoculture jammed all into one limited blind perspective, retired people from knowing the eternal large picture. That eternal perspective encompasses much, much, much more than one's own simple sidewalk that we can normally perceive. Do not be afraid to jump on the cracks and off the cracks as you test the limits. You may get your head cracked and I feel like Humpty Dumpty and there I go reading my stuff and falling off the wall. Was it nominal for you too or did you go into the outer limit? I cannot help myself for making silly jokes. Nominal is a term used in, during the space program to describe whether the object is within working parameters. There are those that want to hide from knowing themselves. They are afraid to jump on the cracks of their own understanding. And the way they do this is to hide from knowing others. Without knowing others, one thinks that everything they know and consider is normal and fine. But to hide from others' views imprisons one in the cell of ignorance. Hiding from others' histories keeps keeping in one safe place, cocooned in the womb of protection, is forever to be a baby needing to rely on others for the sustenance of life and nourishment. If one just keeps in their own comfortable environments, they will never change, and if the environment ceases to exist, they will die. But knowing others allows one to know themselves so they can self-examine. Once one gets perspective, they can see what is good and what is wrong. They can determine what is and what ought to be. Leaving the security of Eden, the protection of one's naive ignorance, is to go into the uncertain world of challenges. It's a step that should not be taken alone. We all are on a, this journey together. Come with me on a journey of understanding. Then our reality of the world can be transformed together as we gather and develop a perspective that is closer to the real eternal reality, the infinite, which is beyond what we can ever know. Now is the time to become awakened, to really know who we are and who others are. Now is the time to know the power of history. It will transform us and will make us a creature to be remembered. We are not just a cog in the machine of the universe. We are not just a speck of dust, a blade of grass in the field. Attach ourselves to history, to life, to others, and we will be attached to the future. In total recall, a man, Quaid, understands himself as being another man, and this transforms him into a new man in a new world. Each of us also finds that, as we know ourselves by knowing others, we will be transformed, and so will our world perspective. We will become transformed into a new man in a new world. As the line goes in Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger, open your mind, then act upon it, then you will be transformed. But when the mind is ch changed, so too is the path we follow will change. The new path will bring us a new adventure. Are we up to the challenge? For adventurers have trials and hardships. Real living is not about being comfortable, but about exploration. We have all hidden in our cave too long, knowing that we will change the future by knowing the past. Be on the right side of history. Bring the blue skies, not the choking death to the world. Do not just react, but find purpose and move forward. The materialist who is not into knowing consciousness believes that bringing your DNA is all that there is to life. Hopefully, our purpose will have more meaning than Steve Martin's The Jerk, though procreating is fun. The journey of inquiry, of questioning, the journey to the new land of possibilities. In this journey, we will be challenged. Do not be offended by the challenge, rather see it as an opportunity. Do not see problems, rather search for solutions. I will say the known, the unknown, and the outrageous. Enjoy, be entertained, be amused, but most of all, think. No history. Take on the challenge of challenging the narratives, then you will put a smile on my face.